So about a month ago, I made a video analyzing and ranking all the official maps on Ark Survival Evolved, and some of you guys loved it, and some of you hated it. So with Ark Survival Ascended finally here, I decided to come back at it with another tier list, and today we're going to be ranking the most popular spots on Ark Survival Ascended, the island. Now for some of these spots, I will also be considering their PvP use, but most of these spots will be ranked with PvE mostly in mind. Please keep in mind that this video is entirely just my opinion, but I would of course love to hear yours in the comments below. So do go let me know what your favourite base spots are to build on Ark Survival Ascended. Without any further ado, let's get into the video and get them ranked. Number 1. Herbivore Island Starting off with a personal favourite of mine, Herbivore Island has a special place in my heart. Located in the very far southeast of the map, it is a herbivore paradise, where new and seasoned players can log off in peace knowing that their tames and bodies will be nice and safe. I love this base location so much for so many reasons. Perhaps it's the built-in water pen that comes with it that can be fenced off with just a few behemoth gates, or the metal spawns that are such a useful resource in early game. Those few metal nodes that will respawn on your island are amazing for starting off and getting those metal tools and the smithy. Herbivore Island will always remain a popular spot in the PvE community, but sadly it isn't the PvP fortress that it might have been in the very early years of Ark. I still think though that this is one of those great early spots for both PvE and PvP where you can get started out. PvE wise, it's one of my favourite spots and I always think they'll be an absolute classic in the Ark community. We're starting off with an absolute banger of a spot and for that reason, it's going in the S tier. Number 2. Carnivore Island while we're talking about Herbivore Island, it would be rude not to mention its older brother Carno Island. Also referred to as Dead Island, Carnivore Island is located in the northeast of the map, up the coast from Herbivore. As the name would suggest, instead of being a sanctuary for herbivores, Carnivore Island is an all-out mosh pit of various types of carnivores ranging from rexes to raptors. Size-wise, the island is a fair bit bigger than Herbivore Island, and while the prospect of carnivores spawning in your backyard may sound pretty terrifying, if you can properly spam the island off with foundations, or any other type of structure, you can prevent this from happening. However, it has to be said that this does not immediately make this spot very friendly to newer players of the game, or low-level players. Kano Island used to be a popular spot for larger tribes back in the day on PvP servers, and with no cryopods or titans in the game currently, I can see this returning once more on Ark Survival Ascended. The added benefit of having Kano Island Cave just below is another benefit for this base spot. It's not quite as handy for water tames as Herbie Island is, and may not quite have the metal spawning directly on the island, but when you are surrounded by mountains containing metal, it's not all that bad. With all this in mind, I'm going to put Carnivore Island as an A tier base location for Ark Survival Ascended. Number 3. Kano Cave Well, we can't talk about Carnivore Island without talking about Kano Cave some more. As mentioned, Kano Cave can be found directly on Carnivore Island, which helped to boost its score on this tier list. The cave itself has always been very popular amongst the PvP community due to its choke points, which you can swim through water to get to. I think this cave with no cryopods currently is a much stronger base location than with cryopods in the game. PvE wise, there really isn't much room in here though. The only way to generate space in this cave is to build upwards and install a lot of different floors. This is mostly fine, but if you are a PvE player, I think there are some better caves to build in, which we will cover in this list. I'm going to put Kano Cave down as a B tier base location. Number 4. Hidden Lake On to our next location, and it is an absolute classic. Everyone knows about the Hidden Lake, which was first showcased in Ark Survival Evolve's first trailer. This spot quickly became a hotspot, and everyone wanted to build here, and for good reason. Not only is the location incredibly pretty, you can easily block off the free pathways to the lake with some behemoth gates. It also has the advantage of being based up in North 2, which is one of the best places to build in the game, due to the metal and drop spawns that can be found nearby. It's also close to the snow, which is super useful for various resources such as oil, silica pearls and organic polymer. I'm not sure that you can get a better location to build your base when you take all of these things into account. There is also a decent amount of flat land up on this cliff, which allows you to build a nice little base. However, I have to admit that I was a little bit underwhelmed of how the location looked when I first saw it on ASA. Spawning in at North 2, I headed straight for it, and I just felt that it looked arguably better on Ark Survival Evolved. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are on this, and I'm still going to rank this spot as an S tier building spot, where it belongs. Number 5. The Icebergs Ah, the good old iceberg base. The iceberg that we will be ranking in this video is the first iceberg when you approach the snow from the west side of the map. I remember vividly this base spot being such a popular spot in the early years of Ark when the snow biome update first released. Some of the advantages of this iceberg are very obvious, being close to so many precious late game resources, a built in water pen at the back of it, and of course being separated from the mainland entirely. Of course this also could be seen as a disadvantage, as if you need to farm any basic resource, you have to either fly or raft away from the iceberg. 
I think this makes it a very good location for middle to late game, but setting up here early game could be quite a painful one, as you attempt to gather tames and farm those starting resources. If you can get set up here with a decent setup and some tames, I think you will really reap the benefits of having the snow biome so close. I'm going to place this iceberg in the B tiered bracket, as while I wouldn't recommend this location early game, I think that towards the late game it has some really good advantages. Number 6, Blue Obelisk. Next up, we're sticking with the snow biome and moving over to Blue Obelisk. Now, I think that all the obelisks have something entirely different to offer, and Blue Obelisk is no different to this. Located in the heart of the snow biome with a winding path up to the top, it's easy to gate off and spam off to make sure that you don't have any mishaps with wild dinos. If you can face the harsh climate of the snow biome, you will find yourself richly rewarded, as you are surrounded by rare resources such as metal, obsidian and organic polymer, all very valuable in that mid to late game stage. Having an obelisk on your doorstep to start boss fights is also a pretty big bonus, as there is no travelling across the map every time that you want to start a fight. Similarly to the iceberg, I wouldn't say this is the type of base that you want to be building early game, and it would be a location that you'd be better off moving to later in the game. Blue Obelisk used to also be a hotspot for PvP players back in the day, and I'll be interested to see if any of those bases return when transfers open up. I am going to place Blue Obelisk as a B tier spot, as it's a spot that I have great personal affection for, and once again, if you can survive the climate, I think there were some really rich rewards to get from the snow biome. Number 7, Stonehenge. Next up, we're going to discuss a spot that I've always known as Stonehenge, which could be found on the southern coast. This always is a popular building spot on Ark Survival Evolves, and it's no different on Ark Survival Ascended. In fact, I think this is one of those spots that certainly has benefited from the Unreal Engine 5 upgrade, and looks absolutely incredible in the remaster. I do like this building spot, although I haven't personally built here, as I feel that you have to have some quite good building skills to truly make the most of this spot. Another thing I'm not also terribly keen on is that you have to travel a bit to get some resources. Metal can be found to the southwest of Stonehenge, so it's not all that bad, but you'll want to make sure that you have an Anki and Argy to make the most of this spot. I think once cryopods are added back into this game, and you can bring your water dinos to the enclosed pond type area, this spot will become even better. That being said, I think if you are a talented PvE builder and want to choose a stunning location to set up shop, there aren't many better alternatives to Stonehenge. I did um and ah about where to put this, as for me I do like to be a little bit close to resources, but I think it's stunning looks and building prospects earn Stonehenge a place in the B tier. Number 8, Green Obelisk. Back to the obelisks once more, and this time we are moving on to Green Obelisk. Now this is one of those rare base locations on this list that I feel is a good shout for both PvE and PvP. Similarly to Blue Obelisk, it comes with the advantage of having an obelisk to run your boss battles from, but the space beneath Green Obelisk for me is what makes it so versatile. You can fit so many breeders, raising areas, or whatever else you wanted down here, which makes this spot deceivingly big. Tribes on official PvP are also starting to take this spot seriously now, and with a true lack of land-based spots, I think this is a trend that will continue to grow. With only one true pathway leading up to the obelisk itself, it is easy to fence off, although you might want to consider spike walling or gating off the sides, so that you don't have any wild dinos falling into the surrounding areas, where you may be storing some dinos. In terms of resources, Green Obelisk is also a pretty fantastic one. You are close to the swamp, which is one of the best places to farm both wood and berries, and metal isn't too far away either. It's one of the more central locations on this list, which I think certainly helps and makes it a very versatile location. I think Green Obelisk is actually a pretty great location for tribes of all sizes and game modes, and one that will continue to grow in popularity. I'm going to rank this as an A tier base spot. Number 9, South 2 Cave. The second cave on our list to rank is the Artifact of the Hunter Cave, sometimes known as Self 2 Cave or Lower Self Cave. I think this cave is a fantastic base location for any medium sized or even small tribes. The cave is deceivingly big inside, with both land and water areas. There is plenty of room in here to raise both water and land dinos, which is always a bonus, and it won't take the resources to build that say an underwater cave would. However, I do think that to fully unlock the most of this cave, you do need to get yourself some tech engrams or teleporter, which does mean that you need to beat the dragon. The reason for this is that you struggle to fit most dinos into this cave due to its choke point near the entrance. Having a teleporter or transmitter will solve this problem, so I'd recommend starting outside of this cave, even if you do plan on moving into it, down the line. I think this cave will work as a great breeding cave or secondary base location, but may struggle to stand on its own two feet as a full base. It is for this reason that I'm going to place South 2 Cave as a B tier base location on our base list. Number 10, Crags Island. Next up we have Crags Island. Crags Island is the island located in the southwest corner of the map. I think this is a little bit like Stonehenge, where you can certainly make yourself something nice out of it, but I do think you need to have quite a bit of building skill to make the most of it. The island itself is pretty nice looking and looks great in Unreal Engine 5, and I think you could definitely build yourself a nice water pen right below your base if you have the expertise to do so. 
The southeast mountain is relatively close, giving you access to some metal spawns at least, and the swamp is just inland slightly, but I don't think this base spot is terribly well located for resources. The drops around this location are also pretty poor, and with Ark Survival Ascended currently running significantly buff drops compared to its predecessor, I would argue that this is something quite big to consider. I imagine Crags Island will have some diehard defenders out there who love this location, but for me, it's not all that great, and I'm going to put it in the C tier in this list. Number 11, Ice Cave. Island Ice Cave, a cave that was so popular and strong in the PvP scene that the devs took the time to rework the entrance. This is a difficult one to rank honestly, as it was always so popular for its strength in PvP, but that doesn't always make it the best location to live in PvE wise. This cave is split into two main chambers, and one of the major things that Ice Cave has got going for is that you can actually fly in the very back section of the cave, which is a first for caves, unless you enable flying of course. This is of course nice for mating and breeding flyer breeders in there. I think honestly this isn't a cave that I would want to live in on a PvE server. Clearing the cave alone would be quite a task as you would need to find some good fur or high fortitude to even survive in here, and then of course survive in the hordes of wild dinos. I'm not saying I don't think it could work, there are some amazing island ice builds out there and you can certainly maximise the space if you build it properly, but I think there are some easier and better alternatives for PvE, case in point self 2 perhaps. With regards to PvP, this cave has also had a significant nerf with the launch of ASA, and although I still do see it as one of the stronger caves on the map, it no longer holds the title as the guaranteed strongest spot on the island that it held for so many years on Survival Evolved. I am going to put this base location in the B tier, but I think that is the PvP side of the game, dragging this location up from the C tier bracket. Number 12, Easy Underwater Cave. Next up we have perhaps my favourite location on the entire map, Easy Underwater Cave. This cave is just stunningly beautiful, incredibly strong in PvP, has amazing drops, so much storage, honestly I could just keep going on about it all day. I love caves where you can breed water dinos and land dinos together, and the water caves on the island are just such great examples of this. There is a reason that almost every tribe on official PvP has already taken Easy Cave, and it is truly one of the best spots to build on the island. PvE wise, it's super easy to gate off all the entrances, and after you place some spam throughout the cave, you shouldn't have to deal with any of the wild dinos spawning in and ruining your day. You can even build this cave and manage to keep some of the loot drops untouched, so you can continue to loot some of the amazing loot crates that are found in this cave. As with a lot of caves though, it has to be said, you do need to get the tech teleporter engram to truly make the most of it. However, with the small and medium teleporters being brought into Arc Ascended, I think this has made them more easily accessible and also drastically reduced the cost of your basic teleporter. With that being said, I think after you have got the needed tech engrams, Easy Cave is the very first cave that you should consider taking. I think it will come as no surprise to you at all that I am going to rank Easy Underwater Cave as an S tier base location. Number 13, Hard Underwater Cave. After Easy Water Cave, there is only one cave to do next, which is the Hard Underwater Cave. And almost everything that I have to say about Easy Cave can also be said about this cave. The underwater caves on the island are probably my favourite sections of the map, as they are not only challenging to run, but also present some amazing base locations. I still slightly prefer Easy Cave, as I think it's better for land dino storage, but Hard Water Cave is no doubt better for water dino storage, as there is an insane amount of water in here to store all of your dinos, big or small. However, due to this, you need to be very careful when claiming this cave, as the last thing you want is to not take complete control of the cave and for creatures to start spawning in, as this cave is hard for a reason. Some of the levels and types of creatures that spawn in here will rip through even your highest of tames. While I would probably say for most tribes and players, you don't need both water caves, if Easy Cave is already taken on your server, don't be afraid to get set up in Hard Underwater Cave, as it is another great base location. Once more, I would urge this to be an extremely late game base location, as clearing out the hordes of hostile dinos on their own is an issue, and of course you will need to get the needed tech engrams to make a teleporter or transmitter. I did deliberate putting this cave in A tier, but I decided, just like Easy Cave, it just has to be an S tier base location. Number 14, Crystal Mountain. Next up, we have a spot that some people might not be that familiar with, but we really all should be. It's Crystal Mountain. Shown off on the very first ever arc trailer, as the base gradually began to progress from wood tier to metal, this spot has always been popular with the PvP community. So as to not get any fobs on it, most tribes would always have green asses or some kind of base built on crystal, as trying to traverse up this mountain on dinos is not easy at all. I would argue with how they've changed Crystal Mountain on ASA that this is even harder now, so I would expect to see this spot being built on almost all official servers. PvE wise, being on top of this mountain has always had good advantages. Being so close to resources makes farming easy, but my main concern would be space here, for your average player. You can build a good tall base with many floors here, but without cryos I worry that most players would run out of storage pretty quickly, 
I think that Crystal could be a good spot for a solo player or a small tribe, but medium to large sized tribes on PvE should probably stay clear for now. After a bit of deliberating, I have placed Crystal as a C tier base spot. I think it is a good spot for a solo player, and official players will likely have this spot built to prevent a fob, but I think as an out and out base spot, I'm not sure I can recommend it to everyone. Number 15, Alpha Pillar. Our penultimate base spot is Alpha Pillar. Located in the northeast of the map between Obsidian Mountain and Crystal Mountain, it is ideally located for so, so much. It's close to high level supply crates, which on this game are so important when starting off, and with easy access to pretty much all rare resources, you could want it is a brilliant location. Located slightly inland, it is one of the more central locations on this list, not far from the Redwoods, for easy access to certain tames or some sap. I am just really a big fan of this location. It does have to be said though, similarly to Crystal Mountain, you may soon find yourself running out of room if you are a large tribe. I think this spot is ideally suited for a small to medium sized tribe looking for a secure spot, or a larger tribe when they are starting off. I do think it's one of those unique spots which is of use to both the PvE and PvP community. A word of warning though, is that if you do plan on starting off here, you might want to get prepared for a bit of a challenge. Plenty of hostile spawns do spawn around this pillar, and while you're getting your base up and running, you may run into a few issues. I would recommend perhaps starting in the south, getting some tames and flyers under your belt, before moving over here to the pillars. Overall though, I do think it is a fantastic spot, and well deserving of the A rank that I'm going to give it on this list. Number 16, Red Obelisk. Last but not least, we have our final obelisk and our final base location. This is of course Red Obelisk, located on the west coast, and at first glance, it might seem like quite an underrated base location. Unlike Green Obelisk, you may not have the massive space below to store your land dinos, but that is because you essentially have a massive built-in water pen to store your dinos in. You can block off the only entrance with a behemoth gate, and this is a fantastic place for water dino storage. However, due to this, the space to actually build a proper base is severely lacking compared to Green Obelisk, and it doesn't give you the same resource advantages that Blue Obelisk has for example. The southwest of the map is probably the opposite end of the map where I would normally like to build, which is the northeast due to its resource and drop spawns. I do think that despite its advantageous water pen, it is the worst located obelisk by far, as it is not close to many resources and just feels quite isolated. I guess it is closer to the snow biome compared to green, which is a plus for the base location. I think red obelisk would also take a very skilled builder to get the most out of this location, and that is also part of the reason that I've decided to place this base location in the C tier. Well, there we have it guys, here are the most popular Ark Survival Ascended base locations ranked. Let me know if I've missed your favourite location off the list, and let me know your thoughts on how I've ranked these base locations. I always want to hear your opinions in the comments. Also, let me know what tier list you guys would like to see me rank next for Ark Survival Ascended, and we will get it ranked. For now though guys, have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you all soon for some more Ark Survival Ascended content. Bye bye, for now. Can I